What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that like button. I hope, um, I'm sorry, hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is Dirty John, um, episode six. So it is a seven part series. So we are next to the last episode. And this, this, this series has been done so well. You know what I'm saying? This episode, um, focuses mainly like the first half of it really was us seeing the whole first five episodes but from the point of view of john and a lot of questions that were went that we didn't understand the answers to or we didn't know what was going on or whatever and it's starting to be revealed to us and it's funny because some of the stuff you didn't even know that you didn't know like um for well we'll get there but some of the stuff like for example well, for example where the hell was he going all day? Like, they never made a big, big deal about that. But then you see here today what he was doing all day long after he dropped Deborah ass off at work and had her car all day. So, the episode starts off. We see John to pick, going to pick up his RV. If you remember, when we left off with him and his sister, she he was in that damn RV. The RV had been in impound all this time. And... Um... When he went to go pick it up, the, you know, the cop was like, let me guess, you you know, you've been a visitor, you know, you've been a, a guest to the state for the last 19 months or however long it had been in impound. And John got nasty with him, but he got his little uh, RV back, honey, and he was parked out in the middle of the desert, but he had Wi-Fi. I don't know how he had it, but he had Wi-Fi, and he had a laptop, and he was, you saw how he was praying. He was just going from woman to woman to woman on these online sites, and he was just going from this woman to that woman to that woman, talking to all these different women, going on all these different dates. And we see what he went on the date with. We see he's on drugs. He's snorting up stuff, honey. We see, you know, we see that he's already sort of like tripping, right? Um, we see him blackmailing people where he hooks up with these women who are married. And then he ends up um, sending the husband pictures of their wives in compromising positions and, you know, blackmailing them for money and things of that nature. So we see all this stuff going down. Then we see him stumble onto little Miss Deborah, right? Deborah was just one of his marks. Just so happened she was dumb enough that she went along with the with the get along. We saw how they set up their first date, and he said, "Well, you know, I'll come and meet you at your house if you don't mind." He was like, "You know, I know that that's not necessarily recommended when you do your online dating, but you know, it's no big deal. I'll just meet you. I'm right in the neighborhood." And she's like, "Okay, sure." And we see him walking to the house, and he's actually, you know, he is. His, her daughter had a good sense of that because, you know, her daughter was like, he walking around here like he casing the joint. Well, he was, you know, peeping her, realizing how much money she had. Like, people can look around and, and do that mental calculation of, okay, that's worth that and that's worth that. And I know this is nice and I know this is nice and I know this neighborhood is nice and your rent is probably this much. So he was doing that mental do 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 and you saw the whole date from his point of view. He had gotten high in the bathroom. So when they went back to her house and he got in the bed and wouldn't leave out the bed and all of that. And he, he, you saw him when he went back to the um, RV and he knew he had fucked up, right? Like, damn, she was going to be a good mark. She had some money. How can I get back in her good graces? How can I make this work for me? And, um... Then when he got back to the house, one of his other women he tried to call um, that he thought was a mark. She was like, um, you were not in surgery today. You were not at nobody's hospital. I called I called 20 hospitals and nobody knows who you are. You don't have any, any privileges anywhere. And that was just how easy it would have been for Deborah to figure out this man was a fake and phony. Just, especially when you meet people online and you meet people, whatever. Just, just fact check. Just go through. He said he work at this hospital and he's a doctor here and he's in surgery. All you gotta do is call. Check the directory. Look at the website. Google them. Um, but of course, and I mean, of course, this wasn't this didn't happen in 2019, so it wasn't quite where it is now, but it was enough. It was enough that she could have gotten some information, but Oh, girl, um, whoever this chick was on the phone, let him know. You're a jerk. He was like, well, what if I called your job checking on you? She was like, and you wouldn't have to worry about that. You're a jerk. And she hung up on him, whatever. So then he really was like, oh, shit, I got to really make things good with Deborah. Like, I really got to make things good with, De with Deborah. Um, then we flash back. So we see him go and make amends and buy her flowers and all of that and get back in her good graces. Then we see him flash back even further to when he was in jail and when he cut himself on purpose. And it was all this man is crazy, right? 
So, he been blackmailing his NA sponsor so he'll sign off on his court paper and give him a clean uh, um, 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 P test. Got him pinned in his uh, court appointed thing so that he, he come back clean off of his P test, honey. Then we see the doctor. Remember when they went to the doctor to, for him to get clean and that doctor sort of pulled Deborah aside and was like, you know you don't have to stay with him. Like, you know you don't have to do this. And I remember at the time thinking, okay, that was like, it was appreciative, but that was a little off. Like, why would the doctor, like, what is it that he sees in John that is making him be like, you know, you don't have to do this? Well, come to find out, John is running drugs with this dude. The doctor ain't all he, who he cracked up to be. He ain't totally crazy because he told Deborah to get the hell away from John. But they running drugs together. John's stealing drugs from, he dating nurses and stealing drugs from the nurses or getting the nurses to steal the drugs. Going back to the doctor and him and the doctor got this whole little drug thing working. It is a mess. You hear me? This man is crazy. And then it was this other chick he was messing with. She was a total crackhead. Like she was totally strung out. That's who, if you remember, the chick that they found in the, um... The closet that time that that was one was John's chick. He purposely um, wanted her to go in there so that she would be scared, right? So that they could, he could talk her into doing all that security and stuff, so he could keep an eye on her. Then we see at Christmas dinner when you know you just see how everything happened, but from John's point of view and other stuff that was going on that we didn't see. Like John was talking to the mom, getting all this other information. That he could throw back at them later on. Throw back at um, Toby and throw back at Veronica. Like, just, just, uh, it was so calculated. Like, this man is absolutely crazy. So then we see where um, he's checking her phone. And I don't mean just like looking at her. Like, he's listening to her voicemail. He's delete going into her email, deleting emails. He's, um, Following, I mean, he's following her at work. Like, this man is totally tripping. And when he went into the hospital, the doctor told him, the doctor that he was running the drugs with, he was like, look, man, you need to lay off of this. Like, you need to chill out. Now, both of them getting high when they saying this. He's like, you might need to chill out. He's like, you're not looking very good. And that's when John got sick and was in the hospital. And the first time Deborah left him. And John... Again, he's got the cameras on. So she won't answer his call. So he goes into the camera and he sees the daughter packing up the apartment. And he sees the bed is stripped clean and stuff. And that's when he's like, fuck. So he puts it into overdrive and he plays his whole little, I'm so, so sorry. Oh, I apologize. You know, he's doing this whole little do 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 And of course, dumb Deborah comes back. And this time, we see he is totally obsessed with seeing what Deborah's doing. That's when he's got the tracker on the car. He's We see him watching her every little move. That's when he's checking her bank accounts. He's checking her voicemails, like everything, listening to her calls. It's a mess. Like, this man, I mean, to the extent that I didn't even think about, like, I wasn't thinking that he was listening to her phone calls and stuff. I was like, this man is crazy. So, then we see where, you know, they have the big showdown, which is where last week's episode left off with her saying, I want the divorce, right? Then shit gets real ugly. Like, then it, like, if you thought he was bad before, oh, he done kicked it into overdrive now. She, her lawyer um, puts in a petition for order protection for her, and um, this fool shows up the court on a cane walking all slow with no attorney and of course you know that the judge was like well look i don't really feel comfortable adjudicating this case without an attorney you know go down down the hall and get you a court appointed attorney and we'll reconvene right well in the meantime while they're waiting to reconvene he starts doing all kinds of crazy stuff he sent out a new picture of her to her clients he starts putting negative reviews on her website He's, um, he didn't, he didn't stole everything he could sell out because she never went back to the penthouse. So he didn't sold, stole everything, sold all her jewelry and, you know, she had designer bags and everything. He didn't ransack the whole damn house. She got him evicted from the penthouse. So he's no longer in the penthouse. So she, she 
so the lawyer told her the lawyer was like look this is about money you know what's going to come down to money just stay the course you know it's a process but we're going to work through the process now in the meantime john john blowing up her phone he calling every five minutes he calling 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 like voicemail full calling so finally she she meets with him she agrees to meet with him and she tells him she's like look what is it that you want to just leave me alone? Like, I just want I just want to be done with you. I want the divorce. What, you know, how much is it going to cost me? How much is it going to cost me to just get you out of my life, for you to just be out of my life? She said, is it half of my money? Like, what is it that you want? And he was like, oh, no. Mm-mm, it's going to cost you. Well, the next thing you know, but he walks away. He doesn't make any deals with her or anything. And he doesn't say anything incriminating just in case she's video, she's, you know, taping him. Well, next thing you know, we see her with her lawyer and her lawyer is pissed off. Her lawyer is like, what is wrong with you? He said, I'm trying to get an order of protection for you against this man and you meeting with him alone. Like, why would you do that? He said, I can't, I can't go back into court now because he's just going to show proof that you agreed to meet with him. So you can't be scared of him because you met with him by yourself and, you know, like without an attorney there. Like, so I can't, he said, what is wrong with you? And she was like, look, I just want him out of my life. She was like, I am afraid of him. And I, I, you told me this was about money, so I figured I'd go offer him some money, and then and then this will be over. And you know, I'm sorry. You know, she's like, I'm sorry. I just I didn't know. And honey, he said, Well, look, we just got to figure out another plan because clearly the plan I had ain't gonna work now. So we got to figure something else out. Well, in the meantime, John then stole her car and set it on fire. This how slick this 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 mofo is, right? When the police, because they got him on camera taking the car, right? She had a camera on her car. So they got the video. So the police got him in court. I mean, the police, not in court, but in interrogation. He, he, he is calm as a cucumber. He says, how could I steal the car? I had a key fob. I had the key. He said, look, me and my wife have an agreement. The certain days of the week I can use the car. It's certain days of the week she uses the car. Conveniently, when it's my day, the car is never there. This particular day, the car was there. I took it. I don't know what happened to it after that. I didn't have nothing to do with it. He said it was stolen while it was in my possession. They they set it on fire. I didn't set the car on fire. They said, he said, how can I steal something? We're still married. He said, I know we're going through a divorce, but we are still legally married. I had a key. How'd I steal it? I said, ooh, he's so, ooh, he's so, mm. He's slick. He is so slick. He is so slick. And the police, you saw the police, they were real rah, rah, rah in the beginning. But you saw the more he talked, the more they sort of just was like, well, okay. Well, I see your point. Well, maybe, he, you know, like you see them, their, their whole, the air just coming out of the, and they just doing one of these numbers all the way down. And... He, put, he said, look, my wife is a psycho bitch. You know, like, don't listen to her. He said, look, we went to court. That got thrown out. And he ain't lying because, remember, the the, the lawyer was like, we not we can't move forward with the, the protective order. He was like, that didn't go so well for her. He said, look, she's just got y'all caught up in our mess. I didn't do nothing. He said, I took the car to my N.A. meeting. So the, the cop was like, so the car was stolen off church parking lot he said no the parking lot was full i had to park on the street when i came out of my meeting it was gone and you just see the police just totally buckle like they just totally buckle to the point where, where it was all over said and done they were just like okay well thank you sir you know appreciate it so then you see deborah talking to her lawyer and her lawyer is like he's good the lawyer said you know he's not stupid he's not erratic he said the reason why your husband never put his hands on you is because he has a plan and he's playing chess i said oh boy honey this daggone john this daggone john so i mean i know that was a down and dirty review but y'all it was it was a but it was so well done. It really was that you just saw so much of it from the other side, you know. And just to say this, and I'm gonna be done with this. 
You know, this weekend was all about the whole surviving R. Kelly. Everybody was talking about the surviving R. Kelly. And everybody was talking about these young girls and um, the 17, 18-year-olds or even the 30-year-olds. And they were just talking about how how would they, how could they be so naive? How could they be so stupid? They this, they that, da 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 But then you see something like this. This was a grown-ass woman. Now, remember, Dirty John is a true story. I mean, certain things in the show have been, you know, changed and moved around. But it is a true story. This actually happened to this woman and her family. Now, this was a grown woman who had been married two or three times, had grown children, had a business, was a very successful businesswoman. She was no dummy. And you saw how she was manipulated and how she was twisted all around over a man. Now, this was a grown woman in her 50, 40s or 50s when this went down. Now, we're talking about 17 and 18 year olds are supposed to be able to decipher. They're supposed to have some better mind coping situation than a, than a 40 year old woman, grown woman. You see what I'm saying? You see how easy a man, when a woman is looking for love or looking for something, how easy it is for a man to manipulate it? Anyway, with that, I'm done. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments, please.